we're lying now. He's now that that big male that we saw lying with the uh, with the with the elephant just now is lying flat on the ground. There we go in the center. You can see how flat a lion can get. That is a full-grown 500-pound male lion that is lying unconscious on his side with some topi, waterbuck and zebra behind. And off to the right-hand side is the reason why he's lying unconscious and in the sun. They've actually made a kill. We're just going to see. There we go. There's a zebra that is lying on its side. And I did see a lion lying next to it. Definitely a de There we go. There's the lion. Or lioness, I should say, not lion. The lioness has been eating are we going to see if we can go a little bit more forward and see if we can show you a better picture than these ones that I've been showing you <laughs> so far this afternoon. We have got some elephant around us as well. It's actually been such a brilliant afternoon. Surrounding us has just been animals by the ton and this elephant cow and her young calf have just been feeding with us as we've uh, as we've come down this drainage line. Now Tula Ann, who's as old as my son is, only five years old, has remarked that this that these animals all look like they're friends with one another and that the uh, and that they and is it normal for this time of the, this year? So Tulan, what a fantastic question from a five-year-old. And yes, all these animals are friendly with one another. Some of them eat grass, some of them eat trees, some of them eat each other, some of them eat wildebeest and zebra and, and so on and so forth. But they all get along with one another quite nicely, to be quite honest with you. There's no big, uh, there's no big animosity, which is a big word to say that they don't, they don't dislike each other at all. They're just in a healthy, um, sort of equilibrium is what I'd like to use is that there's a balance between all the things that like to eat other animals and all the things that like to eat the grass. There's a nice balance. That youngster busy eating the grass over there. Flanked by mom which has got a beautiful set of tusks. I love the elephant in the Mara here in Kenya. The females in particular have got the most elegant ivory. Almost always the same length, the same shape, and quite long for female elephants as well. Isn't that a fantastic shot of her with the trees there in the background? That is lovely. Now, Chantel tells me that a few of you are commenting on the fact that it's so exciting to see all these animals here. I must agree with you. I think it is quite exciting to see all these animals here. And I think it's going to be exciting to see what happens at this lion kill today. When we saw the Angamas, they were heading in this direction, but into a thicket. And I think if we are lucky, they are going to come and join their sister on this, uh, on this, this kill. In the distance and arriving towards us is um, the... Uh, the cars that join hello, the cars that join this fantastic reserve with us of course it's an open reserve very much like the Kruger National Park is where we do uh, some of our other drives as well albeit this is a public area where you can come and drive yourself in or be driven around in in some cars and just adds nicely everyone helping one another to uh, to find their thing. Thank you to everyone who's saying that it's nice to see me in the driving seat again I must say I do miss it from time to time and uh, it's not, it's going to be nice to join you for a couple of drives over the next few days or so before Brent and Jamie get back in between when uh, when James has left he's on his way back to South Africa for a much deserved break to know what surprised me the most about the Mara? That's actually a very good question, Deborah, because it changes from week to week and from month to month. I think when I got here, the the unbelievable space was was um, what got me initially, was the fact that you could see so far and you could drive so far and you'd still be in a game reserve. Then it was the fact that um, 
that the reserve is open and that the borders are, are there are no physical borders so animals can domestic animals can enter the reserve and wild animals can leave the reserve and how often they do it but also what type of in, uh, what type of uh, of harmony they've got quite often you have well, we have uh, zebra and buffalo and hippo we've even had a leopard prowling around our camp for the last couple of uh, for the last couple of nights and everything just seems sort of calm there's no there's no tension coming a bit closer now to this male lion let's see if i can into a nice spot where we can at least see the back of its head. Is he lying down over there? I have no doubt that he's already partaken in uh, in uh, in this uh, zebra kill. And you can see that fat belly at the back there. Another thing that's been quite surprising, uh, Deborah, is the fact that it's. It's a calm temperature here all year round. We've I've gone from summer to winter without a noticeable change in temperature whatsoever. And it's very comfortable. You don't ever get too hot and you don't ever get too cold. And I must say that I can't say the same for our friend Tristan who's sitting down south. Uh, three and a half thousand miles where we definitely do have winter and summer and where we are transitioning from the cold of winter to one of the hottest months of the year and that is October and I'm sure that Tristan has got some news to tell you about how uncomfortable he's feeling at the moment. <laughs> Well, Steph, now I'm starting to feel comfortable. It's about 2 o'clock this afternoon. It wasn't so pleasant.